Hello friends, this video on S block elements part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Reduction potential is a reduction potential for chlorine, iodine, silver, sodium, lithium are given. We have to arrange the following species in decreasing order of the radiation strength. So, uh, greater negative reduction potential. implies more reducing strength. So the one which has greater negative reduction production that means they are more reducing strength. Strength. So if you see the least uh, negative value, the maximum negative value is for lithium. So lithium is the highest. Gone. And then we have sodium. And then we have all positives. So then it will be iodine, right? 0.53. And then it will be silver. And then it will be Cl minus. Right. This is all. Correct. So greater negative reduction potential means more reducing strength. Simple formula we have to use. The next question is why is KO2 paramagnetic? This is because it has one unpaired electron. Right? To start with. So if you use a molecular orbital theory and if you fill this, you'll find that it has one extra electron. So if you see KO2, it has potassium plus 16, that is 35 is the number, atomic number. So if you see it has odd electrons. So it has to be paramagnetic. Why are alkali metals not found in nature? It's a very easy question because they are very reactive. So they are very reactive, so they are found in oxides and uh, hydroxides form. They are not found free in nature. Find the oxidation state of Na2O2. Here also by the rule, this is a peroxide because minus 1 it becomes x. So 2x plus 2 into minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to plus 1. In one of the example, I told k uh, to KO2 to be peroxide, but it's superoxide actually. So there we told it was peroxide, but it is superoxide. Why sodium is less reactive than potassium? So if you see sodium size is this, potassium is bigger, it can lose electron easily and they want to lose electron. So, so if you see potassium is more reactive than sodium. And if you want you can talk in terms of ionization enthalpy also. So ionization enthalpy of potassium is less, it leads less energy to pull out one electron. So the potassium is more reactive than sodium. So if you see here the same thing, sodium and potassium is bigger. So it can easily lose the electron, but this guy will take some more energy to lose electron. Why alkali metals not obtained by chemical reduction methods? A very good question. See, alkali metals, I told, they itself are strong reducing agent. See, alkali metal, are themselves strong reducing agent. So, to reduce them, we need someone who is more powerful than alkali metal as far as reducing properties is concerned and that are there are very few elements and very costly. But if I am talking about chemical production in uh, industrial uh, process, we need something which is cheap, cheaply available and abundant, right? So we can't use the reduction method because to reduce the alkali metal, we need some higher, stronger reducing agent which will be costly and there are very, very few who can do this. So we don't use reducing methods to uh, obtain alkali from the ores. Why, in pota why potassium and cesium rather than lithium uh, use in photoelectric cells? See lithium, small in size, it has higher ionization energy. So the photons, the light photons, their energy is not sufficient to pull out the electron from 
lithium atom and thus they are not used for photoelectricity but if you talk about the potassium or cesium right cesium the size is big and the it can easily pull out the electron they have lower ionization energy right since they have low ionization energy even the energy from the photon the light can pull out the atoms from the electrons from the atoms of the potassium and cesium and hence they are using photoelectric cells why is Li2CO3 decomposed at lower temperature where Na2CO3 at high temperature? So you remember when I talk about the stability of the molecules, I talk about the stability of both the sides, right? So if you talk about this here, the size, carbonate ions are big in size, lithiums are small, sodiums are relatively big. So if you see, it's all compatible size here, right? Here, very small and very big. So this is not stable. And this is stable. Correct? Because Na2CO3, the sodium ions, the carbonates ions are comparable in size, so they are stable. Lithium is very, very small. And so it is not stable. So it's, since it is not stable, so it decomposes even at low temperature. Which alkali metal has the highest melting or which has the least melting point? So they told here, smaller is the size, smaller size means better crystal or stable crystal right because you can form crystals better with a smaller size better crystals means or stable crystal means high melting and melting and boiling point high right so that means small size high melting and boiling point Least melting in boiling point, that means large size. The one which has large size is this. So cesium has the least melting in boiling point. Correct. Which one gives hydrated salt easily? There also I told small size, means it, it, it gets hydrolyzed very easily. So lithium is the smaller one. I have not known picture of lithium. So lithium is smallest, so it gets hydrolyzed very easily. Right? Because size and charge density is, size is very small and charge density is very high, so it can attract water molecule very easily for itself. So lithium forms hydrated salts. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.